probably spend about $500 to $600 on textbooks every semester. At least like $250. It's around $300. Probably about $200. Around $150. I think around $350. This semester it was about, it ended up being about $530. This semester I spent $300 on textbooks. I spent $800 on textbooks this semester. About $200 a semester on textbooks. I avoid buying textbooks at all costs. I even asked like some people if they're selling their textbooks, you know, at a at a fair price. Cause I know some of them were graduating, and they want to sell their textbooks, cause they're trying to like get rid of it. Some even sold it for like a hundred dollars, fifty. Because I just think the the high cost of textbooks is just you know unnecessary when we're just trying to get an education, not to not to go broke. I've unenrolled from probably about three to five courses because I couldn't afford the textbooks. Um, and then a lot of courses I will wait to see if I need the textbook. Um, and if I don't, I won't buy it just because they're so expensive. So it's definitely prohibiting me from taking some of the courses I really wanted to take. I'm, I mean, I'm lucky. I'm a politics student and textbooks and readings sometimes are available online. But especially for those in the STEM subjects, as international students, we already pay a lot of money to come here. STEM textbooks are very expensive and uh, feedback from other international students is that it's a prohibitive cost. So a lot of times they hold off on buying. It's always what student am I leaving out, right? And that potentially, given the rising cost of college, given uh, the housing costs, food insecurity, there are other issues competing with students' financial resources. And I don't want a student to enter my class and not be successful in an area where I have some control. I personally believe that keeping the cost down is, is part of, we should have an eye towards the cost. It's well known that the cost of higher education is just getting bigger and bigger, and if there's something that we as faculty can do to keep the cost down without compromising our educational objectives, we should do it. And in the case of physics, like I said, the books, at least in terms of content, are all the same. To some degree, you know, faculty members are always making informed choices and kind of weighing the cost of books. Faculty in general are responsible, right, in this means. And so, yes, publishers can do things to make it more affordable. My, my, my statistics book was only $40, right? So it wasn't one of the more expensive statistics books because some can go over 100 uh, So there are always choices about how you make, but I remember I thought, I picked a great book, it's only $40. This isn't a real concern. And I had students saying, okay, so when is it going on reserve in the library? It's still not, it's still not affordable. And so that's just the pause and the caution and the question to faculty. It's if you're going to do a, a particular kind of book and if there are these kind of web OER resources that you still have to pay for, what do you do for a student who didn't buy the book? I think it's really awesome when uh, professors are just like aware that there's like a differentiate, like a differing um, sort of like income status or like class status of their students and try and make their classes more accessible. Sometimes I won't buy a textbook even though I know I should have it for the class and I just, it makes it so difficult for me because I'm the kind of person that needs to be able to read this stuff. I need to be able to take notes like uh, for flashcards and stuff because I'm that kind of a learner. Um, so it's really difficult when I have to make decisions to not get a textbook because I feel like I'm kind of limiting myself in the class and in what I'm learning. I don't think access is something that faculty think about for students often, unless students voice it. And some students are more or less comfortable voicing it. So then you'll have issues and you know, if the student's not prepared or the student hasn't read, you don't really know what's going on. And so thinking about the access issues it solves for students that you're unaware of is a really core issue that it helps you to solve. And then predictability. There are certain technologies that can achieve certain goals in a way that can help bring the costs down while still not requiring you to sacrifice anything, or if you're a little clever, can actually enhance your uh, educational objectives a little bit. When I got the grant from the library, 
for the open resources, it really pushed uh, Sharon Edwards, who's the co-instructor for the tutoring course and I, to think about how we might change the course design. And so we moved very directly to a flipped classroom format. So in teams, um, at the tutoring course, students do work outside of class using uh, a wiki, a free and open content wiki, and then come to class and do workshops and activities, more hands-on, more active learning. But I think with OER, you have a chance to kind of customize your materials in a way that you can't always do with a textbook, right? Which is, well, they'll give you lots of things, but then you're like, okay, just don't change the edition. And there's no guarantee that will happen. Odds are the edition will change, right? OER, that's not as much of a, a concern. You will have to tweak. There's an initial upstart cost, but that cost, I think, is worth it. It allows you to do something different. Yeah, so this is one of the most exciting things that we're really interested in is the open snacks textbook gives us the freedom to sort of customize it to our own needs so we can take other open resources around the internet such as there's some a very nice collection of resource materials developed out of University of Maryland that are also Creative Commons and we can take them and merge them together and make a textbook that's really customized to our class. Once you have identified some resources you can use them in a variety of different ways. So on any given wiki page, we'll have the assignment for that week in the course. We'll have some added resources down the bottom if people want to explore further. Sometimes we'll take something from the online and put it into the in-person, take a resource we were going to use in the in-person and put it into the online. It, it really forces us as the instructors to constantly uh, redesign the course um, on the run in a lot of cases. But I think that's a real advantage because then you're, you're constantly seeing how a particular set of readings or viewings or activities work, change it, um, and make it work better. Anytime you pick a new book, there's a cost, right? There's a time, there's an, an, an adaptive period. Right, and so with OER, depending on the book that you choose, and the thing is, new materials come up every day, right? Faculty are designing, and so you might f do all this work and say, okay, well, what I really want to do is bring my notes together in a tool that I can use. So I think faculty, as we're putting things together for ourselves on a regular basis for courses, should be thinking about what is the way that I can do this that's best for me, that's ideal, that can bring the resources together that I use anyway, that I can pass along to my students in a cost-effective manner, and OER gives you a great way to do that. there's a way I can find a textbook without having to spend actual capital on it, uh, you know, I think it's something that as a college student with rising tuition costs that you kind of are forced into the position of doing. Because I'm not going to take out a loan and risk repaying that forever for a textbook. I was going to take a class this semester that I was really interested in, a philo uh, philosophy class, but there was a textbook and I'm already working two jobs to pay for my books and my car and stuff, so I, I did everything that I could to not take it. I ended up going for a class that didn't require a textbook. What money do you use to buy textbooks? The money that I make at college, so it's my savings, which is not really fun to use because I'm graduating in a year and I need my savings. Mm -hmm.